happy life. Happy life, William. Look at this. It's a book. <laughs> yeah, it's a little book. So this is actually a pretty handy. Let's see what kind of message we have to us here. It's kind of marked. Oh, it's a big one. It's a two-pager. <laughs> In all circumstances, be yourself. Do not try to appear better than you are or underestimate yourself. Do not appear to be what you are not. As you yearn for a better position, work hard to achieve it. When you discover imperfections, strive to improve yourself. Right? Both the person who exhibits abilities that he or she does not possess and the person who hides those that he or she does possess are lying. Being genuine, genuine is the way to acquire dignity. Being genuine about yourself. Going up is slow to everyone. The person who is winning the battle now begun earlier. The person who is struggling now will win bad, the, the battle later. Do not be embarrassed by the fact that you are a spirit on probation. Right? In their time, your friends of today walked the road that you are now on. Mother. Father, God, Divine Creator, thank you very much for this opportunity, for this moment, for this life. May we have a, an open mind, a compassionate spirit, and may we put our will in becoming compassionate beings, at least. And one day, may your divine love find our hearts in synteny, so we may spread your love wherever we go, until we become loving ourselves. And with that in mind, with our hearts open, we ask permission to our mentors and guides and to our Master Jesus, the model, the example, to begin our Sunday meeting this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. It's so fitting. I'm going to tell you why it's so fitting the, the, the passage about being genuine, right, about ourselves. Because the topic today is chapter 7 of the Gospel according to Spiritism, which is the talk, which is talk about uh, the poor in spirit. When, uh, when Jesus mentioned in the Sermon of the Mountain, right, the poor in spirit, that we understand exactly the concept of humility, humbleness, right? How, if you check, how important it was in the Gospel, the concept of humility. And how is the challenge for us to understand that? I think we still struggle to understand, because we still equate humility and humbleness with weakness. Right? In our world, you know, especially nowadays, the more aggressive you are, the more, you know, um, you know you're perceived as strong. All right? so if you scream the loudest, Right, you're perceived as strong, and uh, and this is opposite to the gospel, right? Opposite to the gospel, to the teachings of Jesus, right? Where strength is in loving, and strength is in serving, right? And uh, and couldn't be different than the values we actually have today. And I think what we're going to talk a little bit is why that's important, right? Um, 
why humbleness was so important and is so important, I think probably is a, is a quality that if we don't nurture in ourselves, it will be very difficult, if not impossible, to achieve our spiritual goals or our spiritual growth, right? And here's the thing. One of the most amazing things there is in life is knowledge, right? We, if you think about historically, I know we're all in our daily life struggling and we're trying to pay our bills and deal with our businesses, our employees, and, and dealing with all the material problems we have around us right now, trying to find ways to sustain ourselves. So, I mean, all those things, we're, we're, we're struggling, right? We have a lot going on for us, right? But we sometimes lose the perspective of how much we have come, how far we have gone in terms of um, how much technology and things make our lives easier today, how much we know compared, uh, compared to people in the past, how much knowledge everybody has, how much knowledge has been uh, brought to us, right? So uh, we have tremendous machines that we don't, we take for granted, right? People take for granted right now. I mean, how, last time you've been on an airplane, right? I think we do nothing. We even get bored about the flight. You know, many of us here have to take flights at 10 hours or more, right? To get some places down south, right? And uh, isn't it, don't we think when we like, oh my goodness, some people sleep, others don't sleep. Uh, hopefully you sleep on the plane. <laughs> some people don't, right? And they have to endure the whole flight. But think for a moment. You are going between two continents, about 10,000 miles. No, is that 10,000 miles? To Sao Paulo? How much is that? Uh, maybe. About that, right? In 10 hours. You're going into a machine that's flying in the air above the clouds. Way above the clouds. Right? In an air conditioning place. <laughs> so a little bit, you can complain, it's a little bit cold sometimes, but I think it's the purpose. Think about that for a moment. It's magical. Just try, imagine yourself going back in time, 200 years, and trying to tell your great grandparents or you know what you do like no big deal i remember my uh, grandpa used to tell a story my dad used to tell a story that uh, I, li I lived in a small town in brazil i grew up in a small town in brazil and there's the next town it's about 40 kilometers like 20 miles 20 something miles distance right you guys most of us drove that to come here today we may have driven that to come here today right so my grandpa used to take a day <laughs> to just go that's 40 because the, the roads were, this is like what, 150, 100 years ago? Not even that, maybe, right? So the road between the two towns was, was horrible. And if it rained, right, if it rained, it would be like, uh, you know, hell to go through all the, the, the little uh, creeks that would cross. I mean, it would be a mess, right? And what we do today, we just fly them into confidence. So we have come a long way. We live in a society right now that has tremendous comforts and we are standing in that um, opportunity right now, right? So it's natural that we feel that this is amazing and this is the max there is. It's, it's, it's natural that many of us, because if you can understand how an airplane flies or if you have the knowledge uh, deep knowledge on any technology or anything, it's natural that we feel empowered, and you should be. But what's the trap? We lose our humbleness. Because in, even when we are in that beautiful machine in the sky, some of us understand that better than others, you're still in the hands of God. <laughs> you're still in the hands. I have some friends that don't even go still struggle with going into those gigantic machines of flying machines because they're just afraid what's going to happen if it fails and by the way it's very rare very very rare it's very 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 safe statistically it's i know may, people make a lot of jokes about that but it's safer statistically but it's if it fails it would be like a very difficult process right so what what humbleness brings to us is this no matter how much you know and you know a lot no matter how much um expertise you have developed, no matter how much um, um, capability you have as a person, right? 
you are navigated in a world you don't control. We don't control the world. We don't. You know, no matter how intelligent you are, you can be the most intelligent person in the planet right now. Your brain can be extremely capable. A little clot blocks a little vein in your brain. That's it. I have, I have friends that they were, our friends, like, just, and then one day, right? So, humbleness is the only way to approach a life you don't control, right? And that's why lack of control sometimes gets us so stressed out, because we want to control. Hopefully, some of you not as much. I'm, I want to, I like to control. I like to be safe. I like to be, know that my car is not going to break. I get all upset if things are not, not working. I know some people plan on the, make whole trips on a whim, right? They, oh, I'm going to go places. I'm not. I'm the kind of person that goes online and checks the best path, what to see. I spend time doing nothing. I want to know when I get to a place what's going to be there waiting for me, right? I even um, read reviews of what to expect. I like it. And sometimes I do all my planning and it doesn't work at all because rains or snows or, or somebody blocks a road somewhere, a car crash, who knows, right? So there's no way we're going to achieve balance without humbleness. It's impossible. That's why gospel is so strong on that. Because no matter how powerful you might think you are, no matter how knowledgeable you might think you are, you don't have anything in control. Because we are bound to the laws of nature. We're bound to the laws of physical world and to the laws of the spiritual world that most people don't even understand yet. Because they're not even open. I was thinking, we talk about a life that never ends here. This is what we're all about, right? We say, and we... More than that, we believe that we don't die. We believe that our spirits, right, our souls, are independent of our bodies. So eventually our bodies will no longer function because they have a limit time, right? Even if you get to live about, about 100 years, 110, bless, God bless you, still there's going to be a point where your body will stop functioning because it has a limit lifespan, right? But for us, your brain, your mind, your brain is not your, who you are. Your mind is, your, uh, is in your soul, in your spirit, whatever you want to call it, right? That's what never dies. And it will keep living. And it was created long, long, long time ago. So we live in a world, if this is true, let's say this is true, let's say we accept that this is true. Still, science is not there yet. But we, let's say this is true. It's one of the most fundamental things of life, that life never ends. And yet, around us, all Many of the incredibly knowledgeable people just don't know that. We just don't know. It's like, and you think, oh, this is, no, but now we have science and easy. Well, if you go back to one of the most common things we have today, right now, we have our diseases, or we, have, we have been dealing with uh, um, COVID a few years ago, and we have flus. If you think about it, the knowledge about bacteria bacteria or virus, right, only came about in the last two, three hundred years. Before that, we didn't understand, we didn't, we didn't know that there were small cellular uh, 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 life particles, right, that affect our life so much, right? Uh, that knowledge didn't exist until they invented the microscope. And the microscope opened the universe of the small, of the bacteria and all this. All that universe was unknown to us. Um, and I ask you, for how long the bacteria have been around? Since life, because they started life on Earth. We know that 600, 800, 1 billion years ago, there was only bacteria on Earth. So how important is bacteria? Totally. <laughs> Without bacteria, we wouldn't be here in body, in physical body. 
So I'm telling you that just 200, 300 years ago, we knew nothing about that. So the Spirit's the same thing. It's going to affect everything, affect all human relationships. It affects our lives in ways we don't even realize, right? But because we still don't have a microscope, we still rely on us, humans, and by the way, we know about that because we, we do this work here. How challenging it is to have the human factor to be the one open to the spiritual realm. But eventually, we're going to have a microscope, but I don't know what it's going to be called, right? That's going to open the spiritual world as well, right? And then it will be clear for everybody, right, that this universe has been around forever. Problem is, you want to wait? Do you have time? When is going to happen? Do I know? No, I don't know if it's going to take five years, ten years, next year, or a hundred years. We don't know, because that's the path of science. Eventually, they're going to go there. But for us, the time is now. We have to live our lives now. We have to be humble now and do our work right now. So for us, the work of spirituality cannot wait. But that's why, no matter how you trace your path to spirituality, one thing that's going to be part of you, either we, we're going to learn it one way or another, it's going to be the fact that humility, humbleness, will be one of the things we're going to learn. Because no matter what, what they said, imagine the things that are waiting for us to understand. Right? Imagine when we didn't know nothing, we, didn't know, we knew nothing about bacteria. All the health systems we have today, even the sanitizers, wouldn't be possible. Right? So right now we know, science knows nothing about spirituality. Zero. It's a whole universe that doesn't even consider exist. What do you think is coming? We are absolutely ignorant about one of the most important factors of life itself. We need humbleness to navigate this life because we still are far from understanding the whole universe. And this is just Earth. Imagine what God's waiting for us in the, this whole gigantic universe that so far we have not seen the size yet. We can't tell yet, even with all the technology we have, how big this universe is. Thanks God, we know in our hearts there's a loving God guiding all of us. With that in mind, we move to our passes now. Okay, so thank you very much, and we leave our friends online and move to our...